No, he'll sleep okay. That's fine. Yeah, so this is a biomass bed that we planted here. <clears throat> uh, we have it because one of our struggles is uh, uh, growing our own biomass. And uh, this is sort of a pilot site for us to see how well it will fare. So we have on the sides, we have fast growing uh, nitrogen fixing um, root uh, soil structure building species, uh, mustard, pigeon pea, uh, the frosia, um, we have castor oil in there, sunflower, sunflower. Um, you can see how they are growing. So we will get a lot of, uh, of, of, of biomass from that through chop, through slashing them and then using it as mulch, using it as, uh, we can even use it as liquid leaf fertilizer to make liquid leaf fertilizer. We can use it in our composting uh, and so on. In the middle, we have uh, also very high biomass growing trees. We have the magongo oil, we have the marula. What else is there, Kat? Uh, marula, manketi, which is mangongo. Yeah, mangongo. Yeah, okay. um, marula, there's a wild fig. There is uh, Malay. Kalahari apple Mal leaf. There's also mulberry in there. Mm. Yeah, mulberry, kalahari apple leaf. So it's like four or five tree species. Yeah. Um, currently as cuttings and maybe interesting, a specific learning from Stefan is that he got from a permaculturalist in Brazil is to plant the cuttings uh, towards the west oh. so mm. that they will shade themselves. Uh, the growth will still be vertical, yeah. but um, there's an exposed zone that shades the rest of the vegetation. And yeah, predominantly, um, if you look down the alley, uh, we have a system of tree lines with three beds um, that we use for edible cash crops. Yeah. And now we are trying to solve this biomass poverty of ours by dedicating one third of what we previously used as um, food growing for only biomass production, including a densification of growth within the tree lines. Um, that wasn't so successful because of lack of irrigation, a structural design issue that is uh, simultaneously 